Wow, that is an incredible scene from the movie 300. Uh, would you say that's an accurate portrayal of something that these Pythian priestesses would be doing? Or is it over the top? What do you think about that? Yeah, no, I think it's a great um, dress-wise, costumery, uh, outstanding. Um, the fact that they're trying to capture her within the, the mist of inspiration, yeah. And we're, we're going to talk today, Neil, about Sybils and why it's portrayed as such a tortured um erotic dance uh what's going on it's because the god is overcoming her right yeah yeah, yeah yeah this is dr ramon if you don't know he's got some links in the description to check out and he teaches greek courses the link for that is in the description as well and uh yeah let's uh let's get into some of this let's get into it neil before we uh before we jump into the civil would you mind if i introduce myself to this gaggle of excellent audience members that you've got who regularly write, uh, watch your programs that are live. Um, I just want to check in and say hello and acknowledge them. And can I just introduce them myself to them formally? Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm Dr. David Charles Amon Hillman, and I am a, a PhD in classics uh, and Along the way, I decided to do some science as well and worked on a master's, taught some endocrinology, cut some brains and some labs, oh, and uh, in, ended up in Israel on a dig with, oh, just sleeping in Jezebel's uh, uh, backyard. Um, oh. And f from there, I, as I finished my PhD and defended my thesis, which was with the great uh, J Dr. John Scarborough, who was one of the translators of the Greek magical papyri. So for those freaks out there who are into that, um, I had the pleasure of working with the guy who did all the medical side. Um, that was my area, was the pharmacy and the medicine. So um, yeah, when I wrote my dissertation, uh, I was asked, hey, your, your Roman pharmacy stuff is great but you're gonna to have to remove the chapter on recreational drugs and any references to recreational drugs. So uh, I did in order to get my PhD. And then I took that information and sent it off to St. Martin's Press, who of course wanted it because it's fascinating drug stuff. And, and uh, that's the Chemical Muse. That's the book, The Chemical Muse. Um, from there, for those of you who are interested, I'm teaching Greek now from there. I went to um, um, on to teach medical terms and, and, and classics type stuff, but ended up at a Catholic university where I uh, quadrupled the enrollment in Greek. And uh, we, we ended up having five more dioceses who started sending people. Hey, we're tremendously successful. I had my last semester before I got kicked out, I had a class of 96 or 90 some people petitioning to uh, take it. It was my class on ancient cult. Um, I was, I was uh, charged with demon possession. <laughs> there was an inquiry. The bishop oversaw the inquiry. Oh, this was and, a Catholic school? Yeah, yeah. It, there was an, a, a, a Catholic university, right? That's crazy. So there was a formal inquiry. And, and uh, anyway, uh, long story short, um, I study the ancient texts that are the underbelly that nobody wants to dig into. So some of these today are going to be less trodden paths. And you do a lot of work at like with people like Galen who are medical ancient Greek medical texts. Like right. Galen, Galen's focusing on like herbs and stuff like that, right? Yeah, yeah. And there's uh thousands and thousands of pages of untranslated uh Greek when I was in grad school uh, cutting brains, my a former classicist came to me and said, uh, hey, what's the deal with what's the deal with all of these texts that we have that are medical in Greek? And I said, what? And he exposed me to a whole new world. He used to ride the subway in New York um, as late as he could in order to pick up fights. And he would sit with his Play-Doh and, and go between having scuffles with people and reading Plato. So I have a lot of respect for him. This is Galen. This is Galen, right? This is a 1828, right? So when you were in medical school, 
even in the 19th century, you had to have Greek and Latin to get through medical school. Isn't that something? Right. Wow. Uh, any, anyway, that's the kind of stuff that I do. So for, for the people who've been asking, that's, that's who I am. And um, yeah, uh, I guess I wanted to tell you, uh, tell you my philosophy. Um, I seem to be a little bit different. Uh, that's because the first time I walked into my advisor's office, he said, sit down. I want to tell you the three most important things you'll ever learn as a graduate student. He said, sources, 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 right? Those primary sources, it's all that matters. The people that you hear talking about, oh, all the Romans were this way and all the Greeks are that way. That's their idea. They weren't there. They don't know. The only thing we can do as faithful classical philologists is to protect those texts. And that's what I want to do today. I want to just go to the text. I don't want to give you a lecture on who I think the Sibyls are and whether I think they're second century BC or as late as sixth century AD. I, who gives, you know, who cares? Who cares what I think? Let's go see what the Sibyl said. That's what to me is. Important. All right, let's go to it then. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> do we have a. <laughs> so, okay, yeah. So you gave me a few images uploaded uh before we started of, of these texts now there is a really good uh before we even start somebody has a super chat and that's a really good question i think it's perfect to start off with if you don't mind no no please mary smith thank you for the super chat difference between christian sibling oracles and pagan yeah 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 what's the difference oh let's I have, have, a... I have the christian ones right here and they're oh. written in like the 900s they're not old well, I mean, they're old, but now, but compared to the original sibling the orcas that you're talking about, these are they don't these are new compared to that. These are they're talking about Charlemagne the Great. They're talking about Muhammad. This is all after, this is all after the Islamic Empire. This is not ancient stuff, and they tried to pass this off as prophecy from before, which is completely laughable. But anyway, it's very interesting to read, though. I'm not going to lie, I, I do like reading through it. It'll be nice to throw it into the mix. Yeah, we could. We could. The the uh, the uh, Mary Smith. The um, I want you to get your ten dollars worth. So I got to say something, right? No, in all seriousness, um, that's kind of the heart of one of the things that I wanted to look at today. Was why is it that you have um, Noah's wife who is giving oracles? Why do you have that? It's a combination. Is it Christian or pagan? Yeah, the answer is yes. <laughs> Right. Let's go there. Let's, that's a perfect segue into like saying who, good answer. Who oh, is the Sybil? It is Correct. a great answer, but also just to, just real quick because our buddy Jason has another interesting question that can add to this as well. Doctor Amon, is it fair to say medical knowledge is inseparable from philosophical, cultic practices, and theor theurgical pursuits in late antiquity? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Uh, I think it is. Short answer is. You can't do that, right? Because you alchemy and you have all these like this pre sciences that are very, very much co connected to, uh, you know, what their 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 theologies of yeah. like, you know what I mean, like. And it's really, you... ironic how that how it's ironic how science, which is such a rational, um, thing, can come out of something that was completely kind of irrational. I guess we, I can say it irrational. Well, I mean, as as far as alchemy goes, where they're like, you know dealing with spirits and mercury and trying to change metals into other metals, but that turns into a real rational science. So I think what he's, what he's getting at is correct. Yeah. Yeah. What about a ceremony? What about a ceremony? Oh, that's so big. So big. What about a ceremony where you are giving somebody, um, giving, giving somebody a drug to induce a death state. Yeah. Induce the death state. And then bring them out of it again, because when they're in the death state, you have to do something to them to change them like a surgery. You put them into ecstasy and then you take out the rib. Right. You got to have that death experience. Right. And then yeah. the re rebirth. So is that a cult that I'm describing or is it a or is it medicine? Uh, Maybe both. I mean, oh, this. Oh, I, I, you mentioned this to me before we started. You, you, you pointed out there was a Pythia super chat and this is was, i didn't see it because it it was disappeared before i got here but um so back just answer ask, ask it again because i can't see it anymore i don't know what happened to it he i think i uh i think i saw you, you were talking you were asking about the the word pythia where that's from and 
you okay. somebody correctly identified it is from putho in Greek, which means to rot. To call it really means to cause something to rot, right? So I rot on you, baby, right? Um, as and you can be rotted on. So the cinder of the rot, man, is the Pythia. Do you like that? Yeah. And the Pythia is always a woman. Well, and they also think that it might be, um, that it might have a fair bit of python in it. So, yeah, we have the association with this. Is this connected to the, to the name Pythagoras, Pythagoras? The, yeah, same root. Um, oh, so it's funny. Yeah, it's funny because you got that the python is the snake, and there's, there's always the serpent um, symbolism connected to the Pythia. Yes. See, yeah, see right next to her. And, yeah. Um, yeah, it's that it's that Orphic oracular symbol of the serpent, or the Orphic egg, or whatever you want to call it. But yeah. uh, but yeah, the Pythia. More, there... more more concretely, wait, let me not let that one go. More concretely than that, it's the cult of female physicians who have to take this woman who's about to give birth, and they have to induce the death and rebirth process because it's uh, they're using the oystrum, right? <laughs> People forget where, it's where we get the word estrus from. Estrus. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that in the ancient world, women were seen as the embodiment of wisdom, Sophia. The Sophia incarnate. Like that's that's all even in the even in the old testament, even in Judaism, the the the, the word Sophia as as an aspect of God is always talked about as female. Never as never was like his wisdom is great. It's always wisdom. Her wisdom, she always, and every I, I'm, I'm literally in every single case. I'm not even kidding. You'll find the words you find Sophia as a female aspect of God. Wisdom. On top of that, you can take Metis, who is good judgment, and uh, she's the god that comes that Zeus swallows. Who he makes her pregnant, and then he swallows her because he knows his children are going to overcome him. So. Uh, uh, Hephaestus gets an axe, you know, and he chops his head, splits it open. Out comes Athena. Metis is that good judgment. DK, right? All of these goddesses, yeah, there's a central, there's a central. Let's look at this one, Sybil. Shall All we look right, at Sybil? Yeah, let's look at the text. So this is the first one you gave me. Yeah, this is the first one, and let's just read along. I want you to look at the English, and I'm going to show you the Greek in a second. We'll have fun with both. All right. But um, I want to read it to you. I am a Sybil and a Circe born, right? So she's talking about what, what are the Greeks? Who are the Greeks say I am, right? Right. Um, they say in Greece that I am of a foreign fatherland, right? Born of Erythrus, shameless. Others say I am a Sybil and of Circe born and father Nostos. <laughs> Who is yeah. that? Who's Nostos? I would like to introduce to everyone in the channel everybody who's participating i would like you to intro i would like to introduce you to your god <laughs> there he you is found him. you found him bunch of satanists okay <laughs> okay uh it's okay they love it they love to wrap this up right and father gnosis raving mad and false so you see right off the bat they're calling her they're calling her mad and 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 uh a liar and whatnot. Well, wait a minute. So who is this woman we're talking about? It's obviously a woman, right? Who, who is this we're talking about? Um, go to the next one, the next uh, passage. Is it? Yeah. All future things God stored up in my mind. Who is the God that she's talking about? Okay, just keep that in mind. Yeah. That I might prophesy of things to come and things that were. And tell them unto men, for when the world when the world was deluged with the flood of waters, and one man alone was left, a man of honor, sailing on the waves and wooden house, along with beasts and birds, his bride was I, and from his blood I came. To him the first things were, and the last things were all made known. And so from mine own blank, all these things have I truthfully declared. Yeah. Not not to not to stop in the middle of this, but this is a really good question from Myth Vision Podcast. Right. What does speaking in tongues and prophesying in Paul's letters have to do with this? Um, yeah, what does speaking in tongues do have to do with this? Absolutely fucking nothing. 
I'm sorry. So, I don't, I don't want to get demonetized. Okay. Whoops. I'm sorry. You I think that maybe yeah. that with these early Christians who were objectively, like no doubt about it, they were using these this tongue, speaking in tongues thing. Do yeah. you think that it doesn't come from something similar to a movement like this? No, the Sybil doesn't babble nonsense. Okay. Right? And even in the episode in the book of Acts, it says they're speaking specific languages from other regions. So it's not like they're doing this. Sh I shubra, you know what I mean? The I was actually told by, I can't remember which scholar it was. They said that this is a misinterpretation. What it actually means is I can speak English and somebody in French can understand it in French. It, it, it's, it's actually a miracle on the spot. It's to show that this is the true religion. They yeah. don't just blah, 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 blah. <laughs> modern Christians do, and they, they have no idea. They're just misinterpreting the text. Right. No, what comes from the Sybil is hexametric poetry. Hexametric poetry. You see the guy stand up there with the mega church, and he's like, blah, 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 blah. right? And they're like, woo! Yeah. Right? Um, imagine instead it's like a performance that way. But at the same time, she is singing an actual song. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's not. Uh, it's, and you're right, because when you go to the text of Acts, I should actually pull it up. The verse. No, we shouldn't waste time on that. All right. Well, yeah. I was going to say, say real quick. We have the quick. Black Sphinx to go see. We no, have no, Adam. But we, have too much, we have too much to do. In, this, in that book of Acts, it does say they were all speaking each other's languages and understanding it. It actually lays out what speaking in tongues means. Like it's not a, it's not a hidden thing, but anyways, let's continue with what you were. You want me to go to number three? Yeah, go to number three. Let's pull that up. Ah, oh, good, good. Now, who's the god? This is the beginning of book three, and I'll show you the Greek in a second. But who's the god that she's talking to? So we just read that she's Noah's wife and his blood, which I don't know if your audience can figure that out. You know, if they have ears to hear. But there you go. Who is the god that she's invoking in the beginning of this particular? Oracle. Is it Apollo? It's, it's the Thunderer. Oh, the, okay. the Thunderer, the Hoopsie Brimo, the one who can thunder from on high, right? The the one who, the one who is the highest, most exalted Thunderer. So, so let me ask you this real quick: yeah. Why does the why does the Delphi get linked to Apollo so much? Yeah. Um, why does Delphi? Because that's where he shot the dragon, right? Caused it to rot. Oh, that's the that's is that where that the Pythia okay. name comes from then? Mm -hmm. And oh. the Pythia, the Pythia is the priestess there. Yeah, I'm, I almost died at Delphi, but anyway, <laughs> that's another story. You got stories uh, for days. Yes. So thou blessed one, loud thunder of the heavens. Yeah, I don't like the translation that much. I'll show you why. But listen to that, people. We're going to jump into the actual Greek. Listen to this translation. Thou blessed one, loud thunderer of the heavens, who holds in their place the cherubim. Right? Okay, and immediately people want to jump on this and say, wait a minute, there's crossing of, and the scholars get mad, and they're like, get all crazy, like perverted looks in their faces. And they're like, oh, yeah, this is synchronistic. And, you know, get, shut up, dude. Just talk about the text. You know what I mean? What Thou blessed one. Loud thunder of the heavens who hold us in their place, the cherubim. I pray thee, give me now a little rest. Right? She's actually worked up since I have uttered what is all so true. For weary has my heart within me grown. Why should my heart be quivering now again and my soul lashed as with a whip? Mastix is the Greek word. Mastix. Right? Oh, like she's being beaten by a whip. And all of a sudden we know we flash back to the Villa of the Mysteries, the Villa of the Mysteries in Pompeii, uh, uh, Pompeii or Herculaneum. It's one of the two. I can't remember. Um, but it's it's there. You can look at it and it's the Bacchans fucking beating each other. Right? Yeah. Who's beating that little kid? Right? What's going on? Well, um, yeah. So well, why is the... Yes, yes. What does the Greek say for that word cherubim? I'm dying to know now. It says exactly that. That is an exact transliteration of the Greek cherubim. Wow. And what is that? So <laughs> I'll show you in a second. I'll show you in a second. All right. All right. She's being lashed with a whip, Neil. You got to, I'm building up here. I'm trying to, trying to get, get the audience going. I hope they're liking this. Tell us if you want the perverted stuff. Um, yet once more will I speak 
Yeah. Oh, she says, and my soul lashes with a whip, be forced to utter forth, be forced to utter forth its oracle to all. Be forced. Yeah. What's the, now you take the reading. Oh, that's, that's interesting. Forced to utter forth. Is, do you think this was a, honestly, this is a real serious question. Do you think these, this is sort of a forced slavery type of thing? Or do you think that there was women who wanted to be the oracle? What do you think? What do you think of this is like, a, what do you, in your opinion? Yeah, I am just going to speak from sources and from sources I've read and I can give you. Um, the Pythia is put into a position where she is forced to take on the God sexually, where she enters this, um, this sexual union with the God. And that is what causes her to quake and enter the orge. You've heard the word. Can you pull the reading down for a second? Oh yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Um, she's forced to enter this ecstatic state that that's why I like that video. It they did a good job with the movie kind of um, having the actress enter into that contortion. Um, and it's called the orge, right? That's why they call them the orgies, the rights, the rights, right? Because you can't, or you can't enter that union that the Oracle promises you. That is she becomes one with Apollo. You can't enter that union without the orgasmon, right? Without the orgasm. So, uh, yeah, um, it's forced. And some of them don't, some of them go nuts, uh, kill themselves. There's one that ran off a cliff and killed herself under the influence. She sits above the tripod and in the medieval description of the satanic riots in France, um, where there's 20,000 viewers at one. Um, the, the, uh, she sits above the, above the cauldron and they, uh, they accept her washings from this orgasmic act. And then they drink it. They give it to the, you know, the initiates. Um, and that allows them to fly. But anyway, let's, who is the God of this? Who's the God of all this, right? Because this is Noah. This, wait a minute. This is Noah's wife we're talking about who's also related to him by blood. Um, yeah, wife slash daughter. Daughter wife, maybe. Okay, just hang on. <laughs> where Where is this sounding? So are we, Does that, do you see where who Nostos is? Not yet. What is okay. I'm, I'm I'm very I'm mysterious. It's mysterious to me now, and <laughs> you think I would know this, but this is new to me. Okay, let's go to the Black Sphinx. Let's go All to the right. Black. Do we have the Black Sphinx? And then I'm going to share with the people the secrets of Adam. Everybody gets to go home tonight with a something that very few have. Um, yeah, and I shouldn't be telling you because it's mystic, esoteric secrets. Uh, I'll get struck by lightning or something. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I also have some stories to tell from, from, from reading Diodorus. Of okay. <laughs> Alexander visited the, the Oracle. Crazy okay. story. Also, okay. Philip of Macedon. Crazy story. But we'll see <laughs> that when you're done. Okay. Okay. Good. Good, good, good. Um, and it, they're all civil stories. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Um, look at the top. Look, let's go to the fifth line down from the top where it says, boy love. Um, that's Piedrastea. So these are all the things that um, that are the images. Okay, I told you that magic is the production of images. That's why they call it adolatria, the 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 working of the image. The adolon is the image. So these are images. So for your audience, as you're reading these images, it's it, I'm, I'm bringing to mind things for you, and that enables you to be able to put the key in the keyhole and turn it so that you can open that quantum gate. Okay, that's what they're, That's what the magic is. This text is from the Greek magical papyri. Dr. John Scarborough, my advisor, was one of the translators on this. And we used to sit up late at night, late at two in the morning, drinking and smoking uh, uh, pipes, trying to be distinguished <laughs> and, and laughing about these translations and how bad they are. Um, the, oh, wow. It's super, super difficult. The PGM 
is exceptionally technical and it's difficult to translate. Difficult to translate. So is there um, any good translations out there right now? I- there's one, there's there's one, the one that he worked on. Okay. Uh, so it's the only you don't have any cho- you don't have any choice unless you want to read the Greek, in which case, and you'll see it's a lot more vibrant in the Greek. But look at the fifth line down. We're talking about different symbols that will bring this goddess to your templum. Your templum is your space, your consecrated space. It's quantum stuff. Um, boy love, bow drill, a great eyed woman's body with legs outspread, a black sphinx's pierced vagina. All of these are the symbol of my power. Then she goes in to imprecate a couple of divinities, and she mentions Helios, and she mentions Tethys. And you know, Tethys is Tiamat, right? So we're going back to the waters. We're going back to the waters, and you can see what kind of magic is being relied upon. So again, it's the images. It's the images you put together in your mind. Um, uh, And you too can be charged with demon possession (laughs) and opening portals. Can you believe that? How did they figure that one out? Boy love, bow drill, a gray eyed woman's body. What's going on? Um, There's a right that's in play where they would take a scroll and you see this all over the PGM, the Greek magical fire. They would take a scroll and they would compose a, an ink that would be full of drugs and they have the recipes for it. And you, when you write on the scroll and you lick it, uh, it is that what this put, is on the top right here? Where it's a piece of coral, blood of a turtle dove, hoof of a camel hair. Is that what that is? Is that like a, an ingredients for some sort of like kikion potion or something? That's what's typically, typically when you have metaphors, like, you know, as it says the seed of pan, right? Um, the seed of Helios is a very specific plant. It's called like the, we call it the milk. It's a milkweed or something. It, it, it has a white substance that comes out of it that when you drink it, it makes you erect and it makes you euphoric, you know, so they're they're dealing with plants all the time. Right. So yeah, they're just finding the stuff and using it. So um, yeah. What is the seed of pen? You'll find this in the lexicon. It'll give you references and say, this is the name of a drug. Galen, uh, Dioscorides does this, and he's, he, but he gives us the street names. He gives us um, not the ones that the, that the priests would be using, but the ones that would be, you go to the marketplace, you know, give me, give me a brick of star, right? Give me so many drachma of star. And they would, you know, there you go. You got your herb. Um, welcome to the house of Helios, right? And Tethys. Okay. Um, what? Why do I bring up the Black Sphinx? Because the Black Sphinx is that dark oracle, right? She is that Gaia-associated Thonian oracle, the Black Sphinx. There's a reason. At Thebes, there's a Sphinx, and she sits there, and she's like, you can't answer my question. I kill you all, right? I mean, what's going on? It's like, you know, is this an invading army? What's going on? Um, It's an oracle, who's operating on a different level that you and I don't, you and I, we don't have them walking around today, right? Right. So here she is, the Black Sphinx, and she's in a, she's in a boy love situation. So Neil, you should probably smell some of the Phrygian mother in here a little bit. Um, she who takes the boy to her chest, Here's you know, a for you. yeah. Yeah, nice. And n- notice the emphasis on the Helios, right? Snake in the, on the tree in the background. Nice, nice. Uh-huh, good. Yeah. Lions, yeah. She with their lions and throwing with the lions and everything. Yeah, no. Neil, what do we do? What do we do with the this figure of the Sybil, right? So, yeah, who is she through time? I just found out that she's in Iceland, too. I got a great new student who does uh, Norse. And um, she's researching the connections between uh, Icelandic um, uh, history and culture and religion and, and classical antiquity. And it turns out they have the Sybil too, 
and yeah so okay let's go on and see what let's uh let's go to another you want to go to the, the adam yahweh yahweh one yeah there's are people ready for the are people ready for the uh oh they're ready they're, yeah, they're, they're ready for it. who wants the esoteric secrets they're born ready <laughs> especially when it has to do with something in the uh it's something with adam or you know some some character in the in the bible you know what i mean yeah it turns out eve was smarter so interesting <laughs> okay um, look at this. I just want you to look at the English, and then I'm going to throw you to the Greek. Uh, look at the line t- uh, 30 here. This is God who made the four-lettered Adam. Hmm. Yeah, the four-lettered Adam. Now, Neil, throw me up that first page of Greek. Click through. It's probably on the next slide. I may have, I may have put it on the one following. Uh, no, this isn't it. But stop there. Let's, get, let's keep it there because you know what? This is really, this is really good. Uh, go to line 814. Yeah, 814. Okay. And you can see the word meteros, meteros, yes. uh, patros. So she, that's when she's giving her lineage. And so I wanted you to see that. Look, there's the there's the word. And who is Nostos, right? So the funny thing is, does anybody know? Neil, in all seriousness, I kind of blew it off, but who is Nostos? You're the Gnostic informant. And, I, and I'm failing at this one. I'm failing. I failed the test. I have no idea who Nostos is. <laughs> This is this is breaking breaking news right here, man. You you gotta tell us now. <laughs> who, who is Nostos? Does anybody in the gallery? Who is it? Who, somebody in the gallery? Brit, let's tell see us. If somebody in the comments knows. I'm gonna give you guys. Let's see. It's 30, 33 minutes. I'll give you guys a thirty-four. One minute. Who can type in who Nostos is? Yeah, find him. Find him. You're not gonna find him. Nobody. Actually, I'm going to tell the story of Philip of Macedon's oracle, but while, and see if anyone can find it until I'm done. Yeah, let's. Yeah, while we're uh, looking for Nostos, you, you have him. until you have until the end of this story and to find out. And if you win, you get the. This, this is what you win. If you get it right, you win Gnostic money. <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> Philip, <laughs> Philip of Macedon, the king. Okay, the king of Macedon, Philip's Alexander the Great's father, went to visit the Oracle of Delphi during what was known as the Sacred War. And uh, so the story is that Philip interfered. Hold on a second. I'm trying to find the uh, story exactly. Okay. Philip, highly spirited black colt that no one could ride. The Oracle of Delphi stated that whoever could ride this horse would conquer the world. But despite many attempts, neither Philip nor any of his generals could mount the horse. His son, Alexander, later... To, realized that this horse was afraid of his own shadow oh that's the wrong story my bad <laughs> where's the story of philip it's just supposed to yeah. be okay I, i'm just gonna say if I'll, i don't just know say why. It. just tell us what you remember okay the story is that he's going to war against these persians and he's very successful in and unifying greece he he starts what's known as the league of corinth and um so he unifies all of hellas under the macedonian throne and he's ready to go east and he 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 could do it like he could have done what Alexander the Great did easily, probably even better. So he goes to visit the Oracle of Delphi. The Oracle of Delphi says the the bull is mounted, the sacrifice is ready, and um, basically saying like the sacrifice, who this sacrifice is going to be slayed, and the person who uh, pulls this off will basically you know be the king of the world. Basically, well, he did not know that the Oracle was talking about him. Yeah. As, he is the bull that's about to be slain. So, anyways, the very I don't know if it's the next day or a week later or whatever, very shortly after he goes back to Macedon and he he has a procession of the 12 Olympian gods. He also pulls out a 13th god himself in the middle. He's the main god now. He wants to put himself in the pantheon. So as he gets deified, legally deified before he travels east, one of his own bodyguards stabs him in the back and kills him. He dies. And that's when Alexander the Great becomes king of the world, becomes king of Macedon, because he yeah. was the bull, or Philip was actually the bull to be sacrificed, according to. He the, was, the, yeah. He didn't get his own fate, did he? It was right in front of him, and he didn't get the, he didn't get it. Oh, that's fantastic! Yeah. Now, I have an even, I have an even better story about Alexander when he visited the Oracle, but I want. He was a jerk to the Oracle, bro. He, he was a jerk. jerk. I'll just tell the story real quick. So he pulls up there, and he's like, "It's it's off season." The oracles don't tell oracles, or the Pythians don't tell oracles during the off season. It's only certain times, equinoxes, this, that, and third. Well, he she shows wasn't, up. She wasn't. Hang on, she wasn't a Pythia. 
She wasn't a Pythias. She was a priestess of Amun. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're so that's right. Mm -hmm. So he goes there and he says, um, give me a prophecy. She's like, no, I can't do it. It's the off season. He grabs her by the hair and pulls her up on the uh, what is it? The platform? Or what is it called? I don't platform. remember. Some sort honest. of platform. And then she goes, she finally, as he's as he's holding her by the hair, she screams out, you are invincible, my son. Um, Anigdatos Io Pi. The moment yeah. he, and then, so that's, you are invincible, my son. So yeah. he heard Very good, good, good grief. You are, you are invincible, my son. He goes, okay, that's good enough. That, that was all he cared. He just wanted to be told that he's the man. Very, very, like a, yeah. a crazy um, sociopathic person Alexander was. Crazy, nuts. Absolutely. Yeah, and, yeah, and I read one of the historians who says um, that she then went on to prophesy that he wouldn't, that he would die at a, with, when something happened. I don't remember what it was, but it was within a very short period of time. We got so, you know, good, good for them. Right. Gnostics, notable. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Let's see. No. Hazuth. Bless you. What? What is Hazuth? Gnostics nope. is Greek. Wait, right? wait, wait. So what, we got to compare. We got to. Uh, Jacques, we got to compare. Zeke, we got to compare Greek with Greek. Are you pulling Hebrew? Hazuth? A notable horn, kazah, conspicuous. Hmm. I, don't know, I don't know what that is, but if he, if you show, why don't you give us a example where you got that from? Maybe we can look at that. Yeah, let's look at that. You're not looking at the Septuagint, are you? Hmm. Well, I wish you could answer back. <laughs> yeah, you will, you will, you will. Okay, answer back, answer back. We, buddy. we have got this from somewhere. This looks like a real, this looks like a. Let's check it. Here, this looks like Jacques, a, we're going we're gonna to check Jacques. Jacques, you give me an uneasy feeling, Jacques. But you've been right in the past. You're right about Putho being to rot. So um, will, wanna... will will Jacques get the get the money? Yeah, let's see. Do you see this right now? <laughs> so while you're yeah, looking that up, no, no, he's not. He's not. He's not getting the Greek lexicon, which makes me feel better because while you're looking that up, I'll give one more story real quick. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Plutarch. Who was the high priest of Delphi in the early second century? Uttered the words, "The great god Pan is dead," which was the end of the era of this god Pan, who was loved by all the Greeks, and uh, he was this god that looked like this. Basically, he was a goat. He had goat legs, devil horns, and uh, he was always playing the flute. I thought I had an image of uh, Pan. Don't I, do I? Maybe not. Maybe I don't. Yeah, it looks like it's Hebrew. It looks that's like not, it's Hebrew. That's not Pan, but it looks like I'm kind of. It, it looks breaking information there. We just got this in from right, helicopter. What did you, right, what'd you find? It's it's Hebrew. So um, I'm gonna have to say you could take that answer and get rid of it because we're talking about the Greek Nostos in a Greek text. So, yeah. So what's he referring um, to, though? Where is he getting this from? You're not going to find it. All your internet minions, you Satanist of the, from the depths. Thank you, Jacques, though. You got your Greek exactly right. We got to give, we got to give Jacques credit for his Greek. You're Greek. We're not interested in the Hebrew here. We're talking about a Greek text. Okay. okay. What, what is it then? Tell us then. So, um, yeah. Uh, the esoteric enlightenment that we need. Yeah. We should bring, we should go to that, shouldn't we? The name Adam. Can you pull up the Greek text for the Adam? Yeah, it's this one, right? We all know. No, that's Lady Babylon. The only one I have is this one. That's all I got. Okay, here we go. No, that's not it. That's not the, that's the only one you no, said. That's not it. That's not it. Give, give me another one. Pull up some more Greek there. No, that's this is the only two Greeks I got. I, oh, sorry. those are the only two Greeks. Okay, anyway, sure. um, then I will tell you. Uh, I will tell you. Tell us. Uh, the name Adam says the Sybil is from the Thunderer. And remember, she's the daughter of Gnostus now, right? So everybody pay attention. Jason Whoever asked a question, though. Is it a Homer thing? <laughs> Noose. Is, is what? Yeah, is, is Noose a Homer thing? Okay, let's... No, he's saying, he's saying is Gnostus a Homer thing? H hang on, hang on. Um, let's stop the train. 
All right. Let's stop the train. Let's look at this one thing. Then we'll get up there. So we'll be there. So big. Uh, so here, here we are at Adam. You want the secret of life, don't you? I mean, if you don't, I'm, I can walk away. But here it is. You're not going to find this on the internet. Period. The Sybil says that the name Adam, the person Adam, is a tetragrammaton. He is a four-lettered entity that is north, south, east, and west. And that Adam, each of his, the initials in his name, Adam, come from those directions. North, south, east, and west. So all of you sit back, and King James sits back, if we resurrect him and sit him in his chair, his fat, bloated corpse will tell us, what are you doing? You're not taking from the, that must be, oh, heresy or something bad because you're not taking from the Greek Masoretic text of the Old Testament, right? Adam, meaning dirt or clay and redness, right? Uh, no, the Sibyl is saying that word has nothing to do with Hebrew. That word is a Greek word based upon a magical practice, the quartering of the Uranos. Hmm. Okay. The quartering of the Uranos. I told you magic is about those images, making those images set up so you can push the key into the keyhole, right? In order to set up, to locate your keyhole that you can put it in there, you have to divide the universe. You have to quarter, right? Adam. Adam is the one made who is Ewa, who is Ewa. Ewa is the shout that the Bakken Minad has. And the Sybil talks about Minads. You ready for this? Yeah, go ahead. No, um, not to cut you off. Sorry, keep going. I, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, hey, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm in a good spot. What you, what you just said, I was actually just being told that by someone you're not going to believe who just told me the same thing. And it, it has to do with the Samuel Thracian Mysteries. And uh, believe it or not, the Samuel Thracians, ancient Samuel Thracian Mysteries, incorporated Adam, Adamus. As the primordial deity. So this first demigod to live in, on, uh, according to the Nazim preacher, who is a Christian, by the way, but who's, who actually borrows this from the Samothracian mysteries, says that Adam was the primordial god. This is in Greek. This, is not, this has nothing to do with the Hebrew Bible. This is a totally separate thing. So the theory is, that the both of these atoms have a have a parent. They're it's not one borrowing from the other. They're both getting it from so, another source. So it's not like the Old Testament is before this, or this is before the Old Testament. These are both completely separate sources that had this Adamus or Adam character, probably coming from maybe the Sumerians or Proto Indo Europeans. Is but there like any said, reason well, is there like said, they probably identified with Oranos, just like you just said. Yeah. A form of Hermes called Cadimilos. Cadimilos, yes, Cadmilos, yes. So that what you're saying is just, just in case anyone's wondering, this is other other scholars are coming are are agreeing with what, what Amon's saying right now. Not I'm not yeah. saying I'm not doubting you, but I'm just I'm just giving you a little bit more reinforcement. That's all I'm, I'm not not you get what I'm saying. No, that's great. That's great. You you ran over their penises. It says their penises are erect. <laughs> yeah. They stood hands raised, penises erect in the Anaktora. That's what the this why, is, guys, guys. Why would we do that, guys, man? Pause for a second. Do you know yeah. who's saying this? A Christian. A Christian from the early second century, known as the Nasin preacher. This okay. is his, this is his ideas. Uh, ancient Christians had eyes too, so they could <laughs> well, that's, that's what I try to I try to tell people. Is the earliest Christians, the farther back we go, the closer Jesus we get, the the more interesting Christians get, the less dogmatic they are, the more open they are to outside ideas, Platonism, mysteries, whatever. And then all of a sudden, 300 years later, they get this church thing, and everyone thinks that's the beginning of Christianity. It's not. It's the other way around. What do you what do you, let's play a game with the audience? To can anybody tell us in chat what was the first thing the Christians were called? What was the first thing they were called? Uh the adult 
Well, you want me to say it or do you want the chat to say it? I want the chat to say it. Can anybody in that oh, lazy chat room get up here? Somebody, somebody good, chat on and tell us what was the first name of the Christians? They didn't call them Christians to start out with, right? I think a better question would be what was what did they refer Christianity as? Yeah, yeah. What that's, did uh, that's a better question to ask? Okay, okay, Mr. I'm gonna pull out details. I like that. You sharpen it up, but let's sharpen it even more. Let's say what was the first thing the Roman enemies of the church called Abel, them? Abel Shara says Nisara. Yes, that's sort of correct, but it's not what we're getting at. <laughs> what we're getting at is what he's talking about the location and the sect of the Jews that were called the Nazarenes. But we're, what we're talking about, oh, so this this is it? This is close enough, right? Maybe it's Greek. Adoni, no, Adoni, no. But it's it's O D O N, right? Yes, the Adon. The Adon. So he was, I, I think he was guessing it right. He just didn't have the spelling right. Yeah. The first thing, let's refine it. Let's refine it. The first thing that the enemies, the Roman enemies of the church called. Christianity, when they recognized it existed, right? They didn't call them Christians. They gave them a name that was characteristic of what they did all the time. And what was that name? That name was Sibylists. Oh, okay. You're talking about something completely different than me. We're on two different pages. I thought you were referring to the Christians call themselves people of the way, the adults. Yeah, yeah, no. That's what they call themselves. Okay. What the what the Romans on the outside? You're called about, them? Yeah, you're talking about what they were called by other people. Yeah, yeah no, that, that's Sibylists. Yeah, Sibylists. Yeah, days. Yeah, Sibylists because they were. Um, so in the beginning, we had that very first question by Mary in the beginning, and she said, "Are they Christian? Are they pagan? What are they?" Yeah, they are. They're both, right? Um, Here's yeah. a good question: Is Yod Hivavhe ancient code for the four letter DNA code? <laughs> I right. think. I don't think so, yeah. but yeah. it's funny to think that though. It is. It's interesting. Yeah. You know what Jehovah is in Greek, right? Uh, what? No, I don't know. Is it, I don't know. What is it? He's, he's Zeus. He's Zeus brother. Uh, yeah. And, I've, seen, I've seen that. And, Philo says that. And so does, um, <laughs> so does, uh, who, what is it? Is it, is it Plutarch? Uh, and I know, I know uh, Josephus says that too. And then, and then you got the gate, you got the, the, the nickname for Zeus is Jove. Right, for Jupiter. On the on the Roman side, Jupiter's always called Jove. Oh, by the, the, Phrygians, the Phrygians call him Saba Zeus. Yes. And yes. There, there's a there's a writer named Macronius. Love it. Oh. Who thinks that Z Saba Zeus is a cognate with Zahova Zafot, which is uh Lord of the Fly or uh, Lord of uh Lord of the Host, Lord of the Flies, we're talking about. Why can't it now just be Lord of Hosts is is Jehovah Zafot? Okay, okay, we're doing it again. Somebody, somebody, turn off the fucking disco ball because <laughs> now we've done it again. We've done it again. You're bringing in Hebrew. Why are you doing that? Sabbat Zeus. That's just the root Saba from Sabel to to worship and Zeus. That's all it is. Saba, the Sabbat oath. The the Sabbath is not a a, a Hebrew term originally. Yeah. It's a Greek term. And it's all over the uh, Greek magic of papyri. So our, because of our cultural lens, our religious lens, because of the Middle Ages, you and I want to look through the lens of Christianity and Judaism. We want to. And Judaism came around in the 10th century, and their intellectuals within the community said, we need a, we need a, a written text that's complete. Right. And so they created one and King James translated it. The Septuagint is the oldest complete uh, text that we've got. And it's only a goofy ass story of a of a bunch of made up BS, miraculous BS that 70 some translators were able to come up with the same bowl. Right. Bowl. The Sibylline oracles are from the same time. Right. And Julius Africanus, you got me upset. You got no, me upset. No, no, no. I think you're making great points. Julius Africanus points out that the book of Daniel, he's the first one to point out that it's a forgery because he points out that the, the, the phraseology in Daniel is Hellenistic. It's Greek. Yeah, it's even, Greek. Even the Aramaic side, it's like they're using they're using Greek phraseologists, phraseology in the text. You could tell it was translated from Greek to Hebrew. Yeah, there's no reason. And you can see why this that's, is that's just Daniel, though. That's not the whole text. Ne Neil was writing to me about Christ. Why is Christ and Zechariah? Why does it disappear? Why does the word Christos disappear from the what we call now the Old Testament? 
It does so because it didn't make it past the Masoretic translators who did not want to promote Christianity within their own, uh, uh, the, the Torah to them was the, we have to have this. This justifies our national existence. Right, but don't you, right? think, don't you think there was Hebrew scrolls in, there was, maybe they didn't have a full Bible yet. The Septuagint might have been the first full Bible. But I think there was obviously scrolls, Hebrew scrolls, singular scrolls, Zechariah for one. Uh, the Torah might have been the five books put together. Maybe there were separate scrolls. Maybe there was Genesis. Maybe there was a Deuteronomy. Which, there... which one came first, though? We have to solve this question because Septuagint. all of Earth, all, every one of my Israeli buddies right now is watching this, right? They, they the answer is both. <laughs> Wait, where does he say? Do no, they're all secular. They don't care. Do I know why I think the answer is both? Because I, this is, here's what I think. The Septuagint was the first Bible that was put together into one collection. But... Before that, there was already Hebrew scrolls, singular scrolls for each of the books that are in the Septuagint. Is that your theory? Yeah. Okay. I'll believe it when you've got some evidence to back it. That's what I'll believe. I mean, so, you, can't, you, you can't expect people from 400 BC or 500 to, to, to preserve yeah. a scroll. They're going to pass it down. They're going to copy it, make a new one. It's going to keep getting passed down. That's what they were doing. What, what are we doing, though, Neil? I've heard people, I've heard scholars use that type of uh, uh, approach to, to make up things. What can we do? We make up. We make up something. If they, you've, you may be right. You may be right. You don't have the copy of the 3rd century BC uh, Septuagint. It's you, may all be, you may be right. You may be right. Okay, you may be right. There may be texts out there that were yet undiscovered, right? But uh, uh, my, my argument... My my way is always to say it doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. What matters is we have these texts and let's look at them. It's important for us to figure out I agree. I agree. our Greek and whatnot. But um, yeah, could you be right? Yeah, you could. But I want to see some hard evidence, bro. I want to see some hard evidence. You know what I mean? I, and you're the one who doesn't have that poster board of a book. You had a guest on who had a poster board of a book he's selling in the background. You guys, I was trying to tell you that in the beginning. The beloved minions, I was trying to tell you that. There are people out there who are ready to fleece your ass, right? You know what I mean? I'm sorry. I don't want you to get not, not, not to make names or anything, but, like, you'll notice people, like, certain people, especially ones who have books, they <laughs> will not budge an inch. If you show them the evidence, the facts, you show them the data, show them the scholarship, they, they're, the, it's like, when when you have when you have an idea that you have monetized and it's it, it and it builds up for years and years and years it becomes your life's work now you have to protect that there is no ah uh, maybe I was wrong there, it doesn't matter any out you can take any possible route you can take to make this theory true you have to go that way you're going to automatically try to defend that path it's possible that this could be true and this is why but you, but what's more likely it's less like it's more likely that. That's not the real way it went out, played out. Not saying that it's impossible. Not saying they could be, couldn't be right. They can definitely be right, but they're not going with object, objectable, ob, you know. What I'm saying objective truth, objective exactly. facts and data. Something That's you can prove, right? Something you can prove. You can put it into a lab and test it and come out with the results. Absolutely. You fried that guy. You fried that guy, Ralph. He was talking about uh, how is Jesus not? It's different in Greek. Look, it changes oh, over time. By the way, if anyone's watching this, who who is watching the <laughs> thing, there is no. Remember when I said, can we look for the Jesus in Greek? It doesn't exist. Never, it never was produced. It doesn't <laughs> exist. It's in his book. But he actually showed me a part of Josephus in Greek where it has I Z A. So he has the name. It has the name shortened. That's an abbreviation. But he added the S. That doesn't, there's no, that, that's not the same thing at all. That's, that's, no. that's being sneaky right there. You slayed him. You slayed him, Neil. You explained to him. That's not how you, you knew that. You said that's, that's not, not how Greek works. It changes yeah. its endings. It yeah. was, it, it was brilliant. But uh, yeah, con uh, that's what I don't, that's what I don't, mm, that, I don't abide that. I don't abide yeah. that. We got to go with the, we got to go with what we've got and be scientific about this. So yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Can we go to? I think I've got one more. You got one more, the Revelation one. Yeah, the Revelation. Now let's go to Revelation and just read some. You guys who are in this for the the love of the Greek, you know, let's just go. You recognize this right away, right? It's from John's Apocalypse. <laughs> Somebody got roasted. Want me to try to read some of it? <laughs> yeah, go, go ahead. 
<laughs> All right, which part? The whole thing? Yeah, no, 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 no. Oh, the you, Babylon part? Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, you, you can, yeah, you can read the Babylon part when I get to that. But this is cha uh, chapter seventeen yeah, you're from the Apocalypse, right? And we're talking about Lady Babylon, Lady Babylon. Um, yeah, if you want to go, yeah, if, you, if anybody wants to go see Lady Babylon, look her up, right? Lady Babylon. <laughs> okay, is that enough? I think it's enough. Let's read it from line. I'm going to read it first, starting at line. Uh, four, kai hegune ein peri beblemene, por furun kai kokinon, kai ke husomene, husioi, kai lithoi, timioi, kai margaritais. Isn't that nice? That's not the word for margarita. It's the word for, <laughs> it's the word for pearls. But I like that. Yeah. E husapoterion huson. Who is this woman? She's the woman dressed in purple and scarlet. She's the woman carrying the poterion, the, co the cup. The, what kind of cup? The husun, the gold one. That's that cup of communion. It's in her hands, right? In Haiti out days. Gimnon, what's it bearing? Gimnon, this cup contains delugmaton, kaita akatharta, tes porneas out days. It contains the off runnings and the pollution of her pornea, her sex juice. Okay, her cup of communion has her pornea in it. So when you read that the Ophites were drinking semen, right? When Epiphanius of Samos tells us that, they said that like, the Nicolaitans were doing it too. Yeah, Nicolaitans, right? They're getting it from the source. They have the oracle, right? They have her, her, her. What they the Romans call in their esoteric tradition. I'm giving you another one, you creeps. Uh, 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 aqua vitae. You want the water of life? If you'd have asked me, if you'd have asked me, you Gnostics, if you'd have asked me, I'd have given you the water of life. Now, you'd never, you'd never come to the second death, right? Your eyes would be open. So, um, the civil is caught wrapped up right in this tradition and uh, apparently lives from generation to generation independently of our noticing that she never ages. Yeah, and she shows up starting in Babylon with that whole, what was that whole Babylon thing, right? Right, we've got the daughter of Noah ending up in Babylon. And how how is that? What is that? How does that end up bringing us the Christ? It was, it was Virgil, you knuckleheads. It was Virgil. You weren't listening to Virgil. He was bringing the Sybil's prophecy of the Christ to you. I've and you missed it. it. You missed it, Romans. You missed it. Do you uh, have that text by any chance or no? What's, I'm sorry. Say that again. Do you have the text of Virgil that does this? I've heard about Not it. with me. No, not with me. But I've read it, and I do, I do own it. No. Neil, Neil, read for me. Practice. Show these people right. that you, you can practice. I'm going to say. Oh, I'm not that good, but I'll do it, though. I want you to, I want you to Kai, read starting in verse five. Read starting in verse five. Kai epi to uh, metopo, metopo, metopon autos anima gegramanon gegramenon gegramenon uh, mus musterion musterion. Yeah, mus, musterion. Know you know what that means. All right, all right, all right, let me keep going. Babylon, eh, megala, eh, meter, mother, meter. Good, good. Pornon, ka, yeah. ton, bed, uh, bed, uh, bed, glamaton, bed, glamaton, te, Delmaton. okay, te, ge. Yeah, and I'll, I'll translate it for you. And on her forehead, a name was inscribed, Musterion. Yeah. Mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of the Pornea, the mother of prostitutes, Kaiton, and of the off warnings. The, that's that stuff that comes off your bath, man. That's that stuff. It's, it's full of urine and and, and yuckiness, right? That's what they're um, saying. Right. That's that's what. Yeah. You, <laughs> wait, so, wait, is that that is word? K I don't. K I don't. Te. 
Gunaka. Is that the um what does that say right there? The next one? Yeah, and I saw Kai Adon Tang Gunaika, the woman. Methusan. What is she? She is entering a state of methu, which is we get our word methyl in, in chemistry from it, right? Drunkenness. It's a drunken, ecstatic, bacchic state. Wow. Right? Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Ek, well, what is she getting drunk from? Look on the next line. Ek to haimatos ton hagion, kai ek to haimatos ton marturon yesu. She's getting drunk on the blood of the witnesses of Jesus, right? Those holy, those holy ones, right? Wh what? Why is the Greek? Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut it off. Why is can, the can anybody? That's okay. We're done. Okay. The Greek is very much like a lot more vibrant, as you said. It just comes off. It just feels that. I don't. You know what I mean? It's just the way it's the way it it uh, flows. I guess. Yeah, that's why you got to keep learning the Greek. So, so we can, you know, so you can see those things that you haven't seen. So it's the cup of her pornea. Yeah, good. Stephen, the storyteller, says, why did the Oracle of Delphi overshadow the Oracle of Dodona? Yeah, honestly, I couldn't tell you, but it did. It clearly did. Although Dodona is probably the oldest. Um, yeah. So mm, uh, why did it become more? Why did it become more popular? Yeah. Mm, I'm not going to guess. I don't know. Thank you for that super chat, though. It's a really good question because it that's a fact. That's a good point. Anyways, Graham Pog says, What's up between Sybils and Blackstone? Omphalosis. Yeah. Yeah. What is that magic stuff? They got that omphalos, that belly. Yeah. <laughs> what is what you know, you got the division of the universe. Oh my god, Graham. You got the division of the universe again. That stone is there because of we divided the universe, the cosmos. You want me to hear something crazy from the from the Christian sibling oracles, or or do you have something to say on that too? Yeah, throw some crazy Christian sibling oracles in here. Go well, ahead. it starts off addressing the Gnostics, which I thought was interesting. I didn't know that until I bought this, hmm. and it's it says, uh, "John, Lord Bishop, in your lordship was pleased to send me the editions of the sibling oracles by the Ophites, o Ophius, and Gallius." I think myself obliged to acknowledge the favor of dedication to your judgment in this great controversy betwixt the modern critics and the learned fathers of the Christian church, whose opinion I have here undertaken to defend. The sibling oracles are prophecies, but the critics call their call them forgeries of the Gnostics in the second century. It's not it's it's even worse than that. These are not even second century, these are in tenth century or something. Because if you, read, if you read the text, listen listen to this. Muhammad the Great is the impure king who conquered Pel Peloponnese after he had taken Constantinople, the great city. Muhammad subdued Peloponnese. Like, this is all happening in the 15th, 1400s, right? Right? I mean, I'm talking about Mehmed, the conqueror, Muhammad, that's in the 7th century. But it's all, it's, it's talking about events that are happening in the mid late Middle Ages, early medieval times. Oh, you just got muted, dude. You're muted. So they're still talking about the Sibyls, right? They're still talking they're, about they're, the, they're, the they're hijacking the name Sibylline Oracles. Why? That's a good question. Why would they do that? Do, is there an oracle in Islam? Quick, somebody out there who knows the Quran really good. Is there a Sibyl in there somewhere? Is there an oracle who gives, you know, like Moses had his in the tent. Oh, that's, that's, that's the, the Quran is. The Quran is an oracle from the age of Gabriel to Muhammad. Is that right? Yeah, that's that's fact. That's fact. Did they did they, didn't they really did they worship Aphrodite and Bacchus to start that's, with? Well, that's that's what Herodotus says. Herodotus <laughs> thinks that there was first of all he thinks there was 365 minor gods for every day of the year, and that there all of these gods were put inside in in they're, they're you know, Later on, this is not Herodotus, but later on, there's supposedly these are the gods that are put inside the Kaaba. But Herodotus thinks that there had two main gods, male and female, and he calls them Bacchus and Aphrodite. Yeah. But he also says that the real names are Allah and something else. Okay, so okay. He's, he's sinking them. It's not really, they don't really call it that. But so when you're so when your first guest who asked that question about is this Christian or is this pagan, you know, you can ask the same thing. Is this is this is this Islamic tradition or is it pagan tradition? 
that that we find going on in the text. Who is the daughter? Why are the, the pagan sibyls so into the daughter of Noah, who is apparently his wife as well? Um, yeah, yeah. Why is well, Noah? Here, here's a here's a Babylon phrase right here from from the from the from the new Christian sibling oracles. Mm -hmm. um, so it is says, that, "As a loss for thee, O Babylon, who sitteth on the golden throne and the golden footstool." an ancient queen who alone did command the world, a city formerly great and famous. Thou shalt no longer remain on the golden mountain. By the way, wait, wait, stop, stop there, Neil. Why, why don't we, can't we have that? I mean, it sounds beautiful the way they're describing Babylon, right? Why, why don't we want the woman to sit on the throne? For they hate pagans, man. They hate the, the oh. this, is the, this is the new patriarchal world, man. It can't be a woman. Are you kidding me? Women are unclean. That's what they say. Women are unclean. I hate, I hate that. It's so annoying. But anyways, misogynist. by the waters of the Euphrates, thou shalt be thrown down into the earthquakes. The cruel Parthians help thee conquer all. Impure city. See, there's that impure thing. Stop thy mouth, that generation of the Chaldeans. Neither the fallacious nor ask how you shall govern Persia or how to conquer Medes for conquered thy empire for which has hostages sent to Rome like this is like it's weird you know what's cool though I mean I I, I, I kind of I kind of was digging with it there for oh, a while I lie. it's interesting to read though I'm not gonna lie just to see where she was going with that yeah what uh yeah, why, why um, that impure city? What's wrong with Babylon? Remember, that's the place where they all tried to overcome, overcome that father God who sits on the throne, right? I mean, first he has to throw his wife out. Now he's got humans, you know. Now he's got humans pissed off and and uh, worshiping gods that can get them to the to the heights because she's a god. Remember, the Sybil's a god. You, when she's in that union. She becomes, uh, she becomes that power that she unifies with. And it's only she that can do it, right? We're not having, I mean, they have some, there are some things like um, using boys. They use boys. And I'm, I'm sure that's why the reference, I'm sure that's why the reference there to the Black Sphinx with her boy, because you can take a boy who hasn't been corrupted and you can strip him naked and oil him and put him over, position him over a silver basin, and he can see things uh, that you can't through that, that process. That's, yeah, that's what that was. Um, that's what they were saying with the or Orpheus when he, at the end of his life, he was taking on the Thracian rite of <laughs> plucking boys at their young age before they came of manhood. Yes, right. right. Weird stuff. But you listen, forget all that for a second. I, you have to. This is important because. Go ahead. This shows you how Christianity can change the goalpost at any time, no matter what era it is. And um, this right here is so funny because you always hear Christians talk about the uh, the mark of the beast. Is it the COVID vaccine? Is it Bill Gates? Is it every 10 years there's a new mark of the beast? Well, sure enough, when this was written in whatever date it was, 900 AD or whatever, thousand years later, uh, it says... Muhammad was the first command who fled from Mecca in 622. Omar conquered Syria in 637. Jerusalem was taken two years after the siege. Then it was agreed that the Christians should not wear turbans on their head, nor part their hair, but should wear girdles because this is the mark of the beast. Literally, wearing a turban is the mark of the beast, according to this Sybil. This is how you know this is all bunk. It's all political stuff. The mark of the beast changes every 10 years. And then it even says that the Arians, the, this is maybe the denying of Christ's divinity by the Arians, which preceded the coming of the imposter Muhammad, the mystery of antiquity of Thessalonians 2, the Antichrist. Now Muhammad's the Antichrist, and wearing a turban is the mark of the beast. Do you see how everything changes depending on the political situation you're in? That's important to point out. Now keep that in mind. Next time you hear a Christian point out, that Obama is the devil and the mark of the beast is the COVID vaccine. Just remember that the sibling oracles a thousand years ago 
said that Muhammad was the devil and the yeah. mark of the beast is wearing a turban. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. just keep, just don't forget that. That's all I'm saying. Doctor, doctor informant. I like your use of evidence. I applaud you. After this conference, I would walk up and I would shake your hand. I'd be like, you know, I found that quite interesting. I found that, that to be an excellent point. That's the kind of stuff that needs that goes somewhere and needs to go somewhere, right? Dr. Rock asked me the other day, he's like, what are you doing lately? Aren't you writing something? I had to tell him, brother, I'm bringing the apocalypse, right? What, what, do, you, what do you want me to do? There's nothing that I can do that's of value if I'm not, you know? So, uh, damn. Damn, oh, that's beautiful, Neil. Oh, yeah. oh, beautiful. That was... No, it's just it's because just the truth matters. We, yeah. we can believe in things. We can hope for there being a God that loves us. We can. That's. I. I think people should have the right to have spiritual beliefs and connection with the with the unknown, or to have faith in whatever they want to. But we got to be got to be, be real here. We can't we can't politicize these things and weaponize them and you know put them in try to make laws based on our 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 spiritual beliefs that we can't. We don't have any objective evidence for that's that's where I say step in and say stop it, yeah. keep it personal, keep it, keep it um loving, keep it positive. It's not that hard to do. Yeah. You know I mean? But yeah. I was thinking before we go, we can show the pithia one more time for people. Yeah, who have, you want to do that? All right. Let's do that. Roll it. Great scene, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Anything you want to say about anything we talked about or what? No, just thank you. Thank you to the audience. I don't have anything to sell sell you, but I've been watching you guys and you're you're dedicated to Neil and you're dedicated to 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 the work that he's doing. And you guys are educated well. I mean, you got some good community going here. So so yeah. so keep it up and thank you for taking your time. Life short. Read a primary text. Go to one of these texts. Read about read the witches. Read what they say. Why the hell can't we have this back? Neil's got some baby blood in the back, probably. We could probably start this thing up again. Does anybody have a virgin somewhere? Yeah. Right? We, I, got we the need all, I got the chalk pentagram with the candles lit. We're ready, guys. We're going to eat some babies tonight. So it's it's all true. Confirmed. Uh, Illuminati confirmed. You have just attained true gnosis. You have just attained true gnosis. The Demiurge has no power over.